that's how I got involved. I played for quite a while. I played in two Paralympics and then retired in 2007. Yeah. I think it was then. And then I'm now the assistant coach to the Great Britain men's team as well. So we just come back from London. And how was that? It must have been amazing. Uh, yeah, it was amazing. The crowds were great. The facilities were great. It was the best Paralympics I've ever been to. The only thing is we, we came fourth, which is, you know, as you know, is the worst place to come. But <clears throat> other than that, it was great. Fantastic. Now, talk to me a little bit about wheelchair basketball. Is there any fundamental differences between that and the regular game? Yeah, basketball? the differences between it is that in the running game, you have a double dribble. In yep. wheelchair basketball, you still have double dribble. It's called travelling, not double dribble, sorry. And the travelling is you have to have two pushes, and then you must bounce the ball. Okay. When you get to a higher level, you will notice players are just bouncing the ball constantly. So... It, it, so presumably that comes with confidence and technique oh, yeah, individual. What, what we do when we teach young kids is we get them to put the ball on their lap, yeah. push twice, then bounce, and then put it back on their lap, and that gives them the confidence, and then we move on from there. Fantastic. Now, the ball handling skills, presumably, is much of a muchness, but there's a fundamental difference in terms of contact, right? Oh, it's, 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 uh, it's meant to be a non-contact sport, but there's loads of contact. If you've got little kids and young kids who enjoy... You know, especially boys who like a bit of the old crash bang wallop. This game's for them. It's a uh, fantastic. So game. how does that come? About? Is it just literally collisions, or is it a part of the game? To... It's part of the game. Sometimes it's collisions, and you know, some players just do it because they just want to do it, yeah. really. And it's it's just so, so much fun to play. And would you say, how does it work? Because obviously different players have different levels of disability when they get into the game. How does that work in terms of bonding together as a team? Oh, we have a point system, so the more severely disabled will be classed as a one-pointer, and then we go to the ones who probably an amputee or someone who's had about four or five operations who can't play the running game. They, they are 4.5 players. Right. But we also, which is uh, probably not holding many disabled sports, we have a five-point player which is an able-bodied person or kid who can play in the league as well. Now, let's talk a little bit about the chair. What's the difference between a sporting chair and a, a standard wheelchair? Well, I'm sitting in a standard wheelchair. It's what you call it, you know, your granddad used to sit in his chair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Used to be really comfortable in that. That's what I sit in. And this is a sports chair, which is, you know, they have bars along the front. It's very, very strong. This is probably one that off the top. And it cost about three and a half thousand pounds for that. Wow. But you can do amazing things with it. It's light as a feather. You can smash into things, and and it, it's that. That's and a there's big casters on, on the bottom as well. Yeah. Yeah. So a normal, uh, a basketball chair has two at the front, two little casters at the front, one big wheel, and either has one or maybe two wheels at the back, and that's for stability. Right. So you can actually turn this on a nine pence, as they call it. It just yeah. spins. Because presumably, as well, there's a lot of weight movement when you're shooting a ball. There is. Catching and passing so now it. to have the wheels on the back, because it's kind of strange. When I first started playing basketball, we never had no wheels on the back. <laughs> so we was always going backwards, or you had to get your chair balanced just right so you yeah. didn't fall backwards. But now that gives it a lot of stability. So it, it, it be makes... a bit more reckless and not end up yeah, upside down. Yeah, and, and it's good for kids because you put kids in it and they feel really stable in the chair, little kids. You know, we have my, my son, who's a whiz at it, and people look at him like, you should be careful in the chair, but he's just a whiz at it, so, because he's used to seeing them around him, so that really does help the back wheel with them. Fantastic, well, good luck in today's Thank games. you, thank you. But the rebound comes down, there's a bit of a scramble for the ball, and there's a long pass comes forward, but intercepted well by Jack. Great interception there from the long pass. which originally came from Thomas. So now, Jack. Great defensive play by Sally, getting the chair between Jack and the ball. Looks to make a bounce pass, gets it through to number 10. That's Andy Flowers. Goes up and over, it's a loose ball, and 33 heads the ball in front of 31. So it's Tom Budd going up from off the backboards and in for two. It's a great basket this time. Callum out to Michael Tideman. Good piece of defensive play from Thomas. Ball comes across the top and a great pass over there from number 21 up to 31 in for the basket. So that's Tom Budd that uh, scored the basket. And pulls inside, pass over the top, goes through to Mark, goes up for two, rebound comes down. Jack picks up the rebound. A lot of determination in his face as he picks up the ball there. And that goes over the top. And that's in for two. I mean, she passes it over. Callum reaches for it, but the pass manages to find its way through to Thomas, puts it up for two, rebound comes down, 
10 puts it in front, but 25 intercepts for Shropshire. That's Mark Fassbrook over the top to Barry. Puts it up for two and drops in. So that's the Shropshire Warriors on 20. So Callum giving a go with Sam. Carries forward. Oh! Play rolls forward. Jack goes up for two. Yeah, and there it comes. Holds the ball. Looks to cut inside of Sam. Callum looks to cut him off. The pass comes through. 33 looks to go up for two, but the rebound drops down to Scott. Comes across the top looking for Sam. Sam pushes forward, gets possession of the ball. Tom comes in to intercept. She loses control but gets the pass away. Beautifully done down that left wing to Michael who is there to pick it up. Tom's in support. There's a lot of bump and grind with the chairs just trying to run the interference, but a great basket. A three-pointer comes from number 12 for the Spitfires, putting them up to five points. A great three-pointer and a great team play there as they break down the side, passing the ball well and look at the defensive play to buy some time. Now, across the top, the Warriors go up, and that's time. It's Tom putting it in from a pass from Barry across the court. Oh. Michael with the bounce pass through to Scott, looks through to Callum, runs into trouble with the defensive work from Barry, steps up into the way. Bounce pass comes through from Darren, through to Michael. Gives it through to Callum, goes up for two, and makes the basket good. Great place to play there. Defensive rolls. The rebound comes down, and Scott Webster picks it up there for the Spitfire. Over the top from Scott through to Darren. The loose ball's picked up by Adam. And frustration comes in from the uh, Spitfire's coach, understandably looking to make those passes. Barry comes in, looks for the basket, puts a shot up, and beautifully finishes off, putting another two points on the score clock. 53 to 7 is the score line now. Andy Flowers lays it off, finds some space, which Callum goes into with possession of the ball. Sally snatches the ball from his possession and gets it off to Tom. And now Theo's running down the left side. The bounce pass comes through. Three cuts inside, gives it back to Tom. Goes up for two off the backboard and in. A great assist from Theo. Good passing work, sharing the ball well between Tom Budd and Theo Pinnington. Barry just putting his arm across, so he couldn't quite get the angle right. Let's we'll see if he manages it this time. He looks for the shot. But the Shropshire players are getting their hands in front of the play, but this time it connects with the basket and drops in to put another two points on the clock. So you must be fairly happy with that performance, clocking up a good clean 20 points every period? Uh, not really, it was a bit slack, we missed a lot of easy shots that we should be making and defensive, a bit, bit soft at times. I know it's hard when you're winning that easy, but trying to put things in now for future games. So it was a good performance, you know, 84 points is no shabby stuff, but we probably could have had another 40 on top of that. And the guys seem to be enjoying themselves as the game went on. For a coach, is that frustrating because <clears throat> they tend to ease off the intensity when they're having a bit of fun? No, I thought they played better later on when they were more relaxed than chill. they did. When they did at the start of the game, they were in I don't think they were intense at the start of the game. And it's probably difficult for them because they're used to playing at a better quality side. But you, have, you can only play who's put in front of you. <laughs>